Welcome to the next video in the abstract thesis series. As part of this video, we'll discuss a feature of Power BI released in May 2023, Measure Driven Labels. Measure Driven Labels allow users to use a measure to manipulate label display. Let me show you the release notes. I have opened the Power BI May 2023 feature list blog and the blog has provided details about measure driven labels. To use measure driven labels, you need to navigate to the visual format label and inside the values section, you need to enable custom label. Post that you can use a measure to display a label of your choice. In other words, it allows you to replace an existing measure with another measure that provides labels. What are the benefits of that? It is possible to have a custom text on the label. It is especially useful for stacked visuals when we can include both the value and the percentage of the subtotal on the label. I would like to share with you a few of the ways we can utilize this feature in order to get a custom label as well as some interesting displays. Let us have a look at some examples I have created on the Power BI. As you can see in the first visual, which was originally a bar visual, I am displaying stars such as star ratings along with conditional formatting. On the second visual, I am also using custom icons that are based on the value of each brand value. In other words, each brand has been assigned a unique icon followed by gradient conditional formatting. I am using Unicar or copying the icons and pasting them into the measure. Several of these characters do not take other colors. In most cases, you will notice that the icons are conditionally formatted. The reason for this is that some icons have their own color and will not change. One must choose their icon carefully. So we get really interesting visuals using measure driven label. I have another example where, as you can see on the stacked bar visual, I am displaying both the actual value and the percentage value. I tried creating a label that can display in two lines using Unicar, but that did not result in success in this case. Let me show you the measure. I am using Unicar 13 here. I can try with Unicar 10 and you can observe that the label is still on one line. Because of that, I prefer a stacked bar chart instead of a stacked column bar visual. When you view a stacked column bar visual, you will notice that it does not fit properly inside the bar. For the label value to be visible, I have to use a black color and enable overflow. It also doesn't look so good. So that's why I have used only a stacked bar visual for this example. The time has come for me to show you how to create these visuals and what all steps I have taken to achieve them. Let's start with the new Power BI file. I am using my standard Power BI sales model and its sample file can be found on my GitHub. So first, let's start with the stacked bar visual. Let me add a new page from bottom. I'll add a stacked bar visual from the visualization pane using the stacked bar icon. I'll add brand to the Y axis, category in the legend, and I'll add gross measure on the X axis. Next, I need to enable the label. For that, navigate to visualization pane, format, go to data label and enable that. Once you enable or switch it on, you can see the gross value label on stacked bar visual. Now we would like to use a custom label. I can put a measure margin percentage on the label for testing. I need to enable the custom label and then I can drag margin percentage inside the space for add data. You can observe that it is not displaying correctly. To display it correctly, you need to use the display format as none. Once you do that, you will get the correct format. Let me revert it now and keep it as auto for a while and we will adjust this as per need later. I'm going to create a percentage measure for gross percentage. This will provide the percentage of each category in each brand. I click on a measure and I will able to see the measure tool. Inside the measure tool, there is an option to create a measure. Let me click on that. I'm going to create a new measure and give it a different name because I'm going to modify the measure to serve the final objective. Let me call it gross and gross percent. This measure will give you the percentage of the subtotal calculation for each brand row or bar. In this calculation, I divide the gross measure by a calculation that ignores the category filter. This will help in getting a percent of the subtotal. Refer to my video on similar topic to understand this in details. I am ready with the percentage of the subtotal. Let me use this measure in the visual as a custom label. You may observe the format is not correct because the format is auto and may follow the x-axis format. Let me set it to none and it will show a better format. I'll use a format function on this measure to convert it to text and I can also control the format in which it appears. In that case, auto and none do not matter much. I can modify the measure using the format function. At the end, I can use it for hash comma hash 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 dot zero and percentage symbol to get the desired format. Now I will get a text measure. With this text measure, I control the format of the label. 
time to take the measure driver label functionality to next level. Now I want to see both the percentage and the gross value together. As of now, the bar is on the gross value and it displays the label of the percentage of the total. I will have to do some more work to get the final format. Firstly, let me bring in the calculation from another file and change the measure calculation and also explain to you what I am doing. First, I create a variable to format the gross value. If it's less than a thousand, simple formatting. In cases where the number is less than a million, I'll format it with the case symbol. If it's more than a million, I'll do a million formatting. Using the format function, I format the gross value in the return statement. For the percentage, I am creating a formatted percentage measure. I use the same calculation as before. Gross divided by the gross calculation that ignores category context and provides the total at the brand level. So, I am creating a percentage of the subtotal. Divide gross comma calculate gross remove filters item category. These two calculations are appended to ensure gross and gross percentages are displayed together. Once I save this measure, as you can see, both actual and percentage values are displayed in the visual. However, as you can see, some values are not displayed. I can use overflow text, but even the overflow text option does not guarantee the display of all values. It will only display if it fits in. Let me add another page and create a bar visual. I will add a bar visual using the visualization pane and adjust its size. In this bar visual, I'll bring in the brand from the item table on the Y axis and gross measure on the X axis. I'm going to duplicate this visual to create two bar visuals. Copy, paste and move on the right. In the first visual, I want to use a label that shows stars instead of bars. I would like to give the maximum rating of 5 stars like a star rating. But you can choose any number. You can adjust the value 5 I will use in the measure formula with the number you want. I would like to create a measure for star rating. In this new measure, I want to divide the gross value by the maximum value at the brand level. Let me create a new measure for this. I'll click on the measure table. Use the tables tool. Click on new measure to create a measure that returns stars. I'll explain the calculation. Here I divide gross by max gross value at the brand level. To do so, we first need to group the values at the brand level which is done using values inside max x. Once I get the values based on brands, I need to find the maximum values across all brands. For that, all selected help to remove context and max x helps to get the maximum. Divide gross comma calculate max x values item brand comma gross comma all selected. Every row has a ratio divided by the brand's maximum value. Now let us multiply this by 5 and round it up to the 0 decimal places. This will give me numbers ranging from 1 to 5. I am using this unicar value for the star. I have also added the code of is in scope option. In this case, I have taken it from a measure that actually displayed the star, not the label. In that measure, it was used to suppress the total row. This ensures that if you use it in a table visual, it won't display when brand is not in scope. This code might not help in this case. Stars are repeated by using the number I got above in the variable underscore ratio 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let me use this measure for a custom data label in the first visual on the left. I'll click on the visual format or properties. Navigate to the data labels, enable it. Inside the values, I'll enable my custom label. And I will add the star measure to the custom label measure. You can see the star on the bar, but it doesn't look the same as what I had shown in initially will make it happen. The first thing I'm going to do is scroll up a bit and change the position from auto to inside base. Now all the stars are aligned correctly. I also need to make all these bars transparent. To achieve this, I need to create another measure because I can't simply assign a transparent color. Let me create a measure called T color. In T color, I'll use 6F characters followed by two zeros hash FFF00. This combination represents a white color but two zeros make it transparent. Now, I navigate to the bar's color. Use the FX icon to apply conditional formatting. Navigate to field values and select T color and press OK. Once I do that, you notice that the bars become transparent. However, because the stars had the same color as the background, they became invisible. So, I've changed the background color to black to make the stars visible. I also want conditional formatting for the star, which means the data label. Please note that if you have more than one bar or having trouble with transparent color, you can use the background color for the bars and choose different colors for the labels. This means that when the bar and background have the same color, the bars will disappear. Now let's add conditional formatting to the label. 
To do this, I'll create another measure, this time using the margin percent measure. I'll create another measure and use a switch true statement. If the margin is less than 11%, it'll be red. If less than 12%, it'll be orange. If less than 13%, it'll be yellow. Otherwise, it'll be green. This means margins from 0% to 11%. The stars will be red. 11% to 12%, the stars will be orange. 12% to 13%, the stars will be yellow. And above 13%, the stars will be green. Now, I'll use this measure to conditional formatting of the data label values. Click on the FX icon and select the field value option from the selection box. Next, select the margin color measure. Click on OK to apply the formatting. Now, not only do you have the stars, but they are also colored based on each brand's margin percentage. Our bars have been replaced with star ratings using the measure-driven data label. As far as font size is concerned, you only have a small amount of wiggle room. I have already tested it. In the second visual, I want to represent my brand using different icons. Here's what I plan to do. I will bring in multiple icons. To do so, I'll create a measure that shows a unique icon for each brand. I've already copied and pasted these Unicar characters from the internet instead of obtaining the actual Unicar codes. Some of these icons have their own colors which might not change when we apply conditional formatting. We can use this kind of label to associate with brand or category. I need to use these icon codes in another measure that repeats these icons based on gross value. Let me add another measure. Measure Unicar. Here again, I divide gross by max gross value at the brand level. To do so, we first need to group the values at the brand level which is done using values inside max x. Once I get the values based on brands, I need to find the maximum values across all brands. For that, all selected help to remove context and max x helps to get the maximum. Divide gross comma calculate max x values, item, brand, comma, gross, comma, all selected. Every row has a ratio divided by the brand's maximum value. Now let us multiply this by 5 and round it up to the 0 decimal places. To create a repeating code, I use the generate series function and combine these icons along with space using concatenate x. Concatenate x comma generate series from 1 to variable underscore ratio comma increment to step of 1. Comma brand icon comma space. Now these first and last double quotes are optional, I can remove those. For the second visual, I want to use different icons for each brand. To do this, I'll add a new measure to get these icons. Let me use this measure for a custom data label in the second visual on the right. I'll click on the visual format or properties. Navigate to the data labels, enable it. Inside the values, I'll enable my custom label. And I will add the unique icon measure to the custom label measure. Now, we have the icons in the bar, but we need to adjust them. The adjustment here is the position. I'll set it to inside base. Let me choose a transparent color here again. Use the FX icon to apply conditional formatting. Navigate to field values and select T color and press OK. Once I do that, you'll notice that the bars become transparent. Now, I'll use this measure for conditional formatting of the data label values. Click on the FX icon and select the field value option from the selection box. Next, select the margin color measure. Click on OK to apply the formatting. Now, not only do you have the icons, but they are also colored based on each brand's margin percentage. But if I add an icon with its own color, the color might not change with conditional formatting. So, the selection of such icons should be based on whether we want to change the color or not. Similarly, you can display faces, stars, or other thousands of icons, creating really interesting visuals. One more thing you can do is if these values are associated with the brand or a categorical variable, you can go to Axis and disable the axis and you have your values. If you want, you can further append the value at the end. Let me modify the measure to do so. Let me use the format function on gross measure and format gross as a comma separated number and append it at the end of the icon's text. Now I'm getting value as well. If you want to give some extra space, add a space character to the measure formula. Remember both the icon and measure values will appear together and use the same color. Here are both icons and formatted measures in one label. So if you are looking for a different color format or font size, that is not possible. So why don't you try this out? Let me know what else you want me to cover in this series. Like share and comment. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you.